No, they didn't. Yeah, yeah. They didn't. All right, everybody, just as a couple reminders, no flash photography. Um, and if you do have a question, raise your hands. We got mics in either corner. Let us know your name, state your affiliation, and please direct your, we obviously have five guys up here, so they can't all answer every question. So please direct your question to somebody. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, th th this, I was gonna ask Dusty a question and Moses a question. Dusty, now, now that you're here on site, you know, you got the NCAA banner behind you, all that, how, how does it feel? Is it, is, is it kind of what you envisioned? And after Dusty answers, if Moses could talk about um, uh, Angel Delgado, the Seton Hall big guy leading the country in rebound, and what, what you think of him and what you anticipate from the matchup between, you know, the big guys? Um, you know, it's just, it's really cool. We just got here. Uh, we had a practice yesterday and then a uh, practice at Furman. Um, I practiced at Furman yesterday in Bob Jones University today, but this is the first time we're getting around here, and you know it's really cool. I like the environment. Um, I'm just really ready for tomorrow. Moses. Yeah, what's my question? Uh, your your question is, um, <laughs> what, what, what do you think of Angel Delgado, the 6'10 Seton Hall player, 31, that's leading the country in rebound, and what, what do you think of him as a player, and what do you think about going up against him? What do you think about you, you guys matching up? Um. He, um, obviously, he's a very good player. Um, we just gotta do a very a good job of keeping him off the off the glass. Um, if we do if we do that, we can we can push the ball after getting the rebound. What's what, what's the key to keeping a guy off the glass who's averaging 13 boards? Because obviously everybody's been trying to do that and been working very good. What what do you think? What, what, what's your all's you know plan to do that? Um, box him out, box him out. <laughs> That's how you keep a guy off the off the you box him out. Uh, the other way, and then you get a, and then you get the ball, and then you go the other way. That's a rebound, and um, <laughs> and then you um, and do the other way to do that is put a body on them. You know, if you put a body on them, the other way, you can get the ball to go over your back, and uh, we can do a good job. If we do a good job of that, we'll be fine. Hey guys, uh, Drew here from the NBC in Fayetteville. Uh, Manny, uh, the leadership on this team, just the way it's evolved this year, I mean, all the guys up there really have been leaders for this group, and now you're at this stage. Collectively, what's the leadership been like on this run for you guys? Yeah, I mean, like, like you just said, I mean, it's just been a collective group of leaders, and, and it's the guys you're looking at. These guys right here, uh, up here, um, these are the guys that have you know, just brought it every single day of practice, on and off the court, and that, that's what leaders do. I mean, it's not just on the court or in the games. They're, it's continuous every day, and when you got five of us doing it, I mean, it's it's just real big for the team, and then that reflects, and then we, we make it this far. So, I mean, it's just, it's just evolved through the whole year, and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. It's for, for uh, uh, Jalen and Daryl. Uh, you guys obviously have a deep bench, you know, big rotation. Seton Hall has a shorter bench. What do you think you guys can do in terms of getting the game sped up and, and making depth an issue? I think, I think um, we just got to push the ball, keep the tempo up, and just play our game. Because I think they play with seven people. We play 10. So when the time they get tired, we just keep going, we just keep going. So. Uh, kind of piggyback on what Jalen said. If we push the ball and, and play our game, which is up tempo, death will, death will really come into play in this game. Uh, like Jalen said, we play 10 people and they play seven. So if we play the way we're supposed to play, there's no way a team can play seven players with us. Eric Bolin, SEC Country. Manny and Moses, what's changed from two years ago when you guys were in the NCAA tournament as, as younger guys versus you know being a little bit older now? Manny, why don't you take that first? Um, I mean, it's it's really the same feeling, though. You, you're here, uh, but you're not just excited to be here. You want to keep dancing. We're not we're not here just to oh yeah, media, 
the hotel, you're at the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's all nice, but that's that's not our focus. Uh, we're here to dance. And then obviously, I mean, we're here and we're seniors. It's different than when you're a sophomore. Uh, it's, it's your last time ever getting an opportunity to play in March Madness. So, I mean, that sense of urgency is just through the roof. And you're just ready for the moment. Can't wait. Moses, you want to add? Um, yeah, um, two years ago, we, we played, me and Manny played in the games, but we didn't play that much, you know. But this year, we, we, we are one of the key players on, on, the, on this team, and we know what it takes because we played in that game two years ago, and we know what, it, or what we have to bring to the game and what we have to tell the guys to bring to the game to be able to a execute. And we're just here to just play one game or happy to be in the tournament and stuff. We're here to win games. Yeah. Dusty, was there, was there ever a time when you thought you, know, you wouldn't get to enjoy this moment? I mean, like after last season? Or were you always pretty confident it was going to happen this year? Um, I was pretty confident it was going to happen this year. You know, after last year, it was down. Because, I mean, I didn't even have a team that sniffed the bubble yet. So uh, being able this year to have a team that's uh, successful. And, and, you know, I knew when we were playing pickup in the summer, you know, we were going to have a special team. I could just tell. And I could just tell people's mindsets were different. And, uh, from then on, it's just been a, a grind, and we've just been everyone's been focused and taking it one game at a time. Yeah, Pop, I, I should know this, but when, when the team went to Jacksonville a couple of years ago, you redshirted. Did, did, I don't even know if you're allowed to go as a redshirt. Did, did you get to go to that? No, I was on vacation when they were there. Where, 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 where were you? I was in Miami. Okay, well, you were close. <laughs> uh, well, and what's it like? Because you, you practice with the guys all year, you're, you're part of the team, but they go to the NCAA tournament, you can't go because you're redshirt. What, what, what was that like? Uh, it was difficult, but you know that whole year I'd gotten used to not traveling because I could never travel with them. Um, but it it was it was cool just being a part of that team. Anyway, whenever they got back from wins and stuff, uh, you know, being able to help contribute a little bit in practice. But it, I did I definitely wanted to go, but you know, as you're not allowed to. Any additional questions for the student athletes? All right, thank you. We'll have coach here in a few minutes. Ready whenever you? Yeah. Coach, how are you? Yeah, how you Erica. Erica. Nice Thanks. to meet you. Same All right, we'll open it up for questions. Just please raise your hand. We're supposed to identify ourselves. Hey, um, Bob, how you doing, Bob? I'm uh, Bob Holt for the Arkansas Democrats. I'm just trying to follow the rules. Um, hey, you've obviously got a deeper bench than Seton Hall. What's the key to making it an up-and-down game to where you guys can take advantage of your depth? 
Well, you know, we prefer the game to be up and down the floor. And I think even Seton Hall, they, they get up and down the floor. I mean, you look at some of their scoring. Uh, they've scored in the 80s as well. So uh, it's the NCAA tournament. I'm sure they're going to come with everything, and we're going to come with everything as well. Uh, but the game is it's a 40-minute game. And uh, as I say, our defense hopefully can dictate some of that in terms of how the game goes. But they're a very good de defensive team as well. Got great guard play. Uh, when you got one of the leading rebounders in the, in the country, uh, that gives you a plus as well. So they really attack the glass, and that's something that we're going to really, really have to do a good job of. And I think that's how you get the game up and down the floor. We got to limit them to one shot, uh, and whether they make it, we got to uh, make transition offense uh, a priority and transition defense a priority as well. Um, what, what, what do you think of Delgado, I guess, after being able to watch him and film and stuff? And how do you see the matchup between him, him and Moses? Well, you know, first of all, I think the matchup's going to be Seton Hall in Arkansas. It, you can't just guard him with one person, Delgado. He's, you got to keep him off the glass. But he has a great presence down low. He can face up. Uh, he's a great passer. Has a, I mean, he has those soft hands. When you catch it, man, it's like, like Velcro. Uh, that's and that's really helpful in rebounding. He's a great position rebounder. And they play off of him. Uh, I think he plays with a lot of energy, a lot of passion. Uh, with our team, uh, I think there are times we go as Moses goes. Uh, I think with Seton Hall, I think him, he, and Car Har Car Carrington are no question about it. They're big keys to him. And the guy that's really playing well is Rodriguez, is playing absolutely well right now. So, uh, but Delgado, I mean, we've. Uh, we we got to make the game. Uh, we can't just let him just uh, have it in the paint because he'll destroy you because he can pass the ball so well. But yet he can use his body to score as well. He's a first-team all-conference player, I think, unanimously. unanimously. So uh, that tells you uh, when a guy can get that many rebounds, man, I'll tell you what, uh, he's got great instincts for the ball. Eric Mullen, SEC country. Uh, the guys were just in here joking, laughing at each other as they always do. How much does that looseness help in the NCAA tournament? You know, you've obviously done it a few times. Is it good to have your players loose, or is there such a thing as too loose? Well, I, you know, the first game, it, it kind of worries or scares the coach anyway because you don't know how they're going to come out. Uh, uh, but this group has been pretty good. Uh, coming off of uh, the SEC tournament, hopefully that kind of gives these guys an idea of uh, what it's going to be like to uh, to play uh, in, in a setting like this here, and we got to lean on those guys you saw up here, Manuel, uh, Moses, Kinsley. Uh, we got to lean on those guys and to to make sure these guys understand what what it takes place. And a guy like Anton Beard who was here, uh, but I, in terms of being ready to play, our guys will come out; they'll be ready. Bobby Swafford, CBS in Fayetteville. You mentioned Anton Beer. He actually got the start for you a couple of years ago. Obviously, there's been a lot to his story over the last couple of seasons. How have you seen him grow from that point, and especially this season as a player? Anton's been real big for us. I, I think he's the reason why we're seeing the, the adjustments for Jalen uh, and Daryl Macon. I mean, you, you made the statement he started for us. And, and a lot of guys, you know, they have a problem with that, you know, with some new guys coming in. and. Uh, but for him, I think he's been all arms, uh, probably one of the best friends. And so uh, he's been key to us coming off the bench. Uh, he's a common force. And, and I think he's playing some of his best basketball this year, uh, defensively, offensively. Uh, he got sick there for a while and because he was starting before he got sick. And then some other guys start playing well. Uh, but he's going to be key, and, and we're going to have to lean on him. Uh, and we have leaned on him, his experience throughout this, uh, this, well, throughout this season. Coach, uh, just in terms of your bench, and then obviously one of these guys being a starter in DT, but how much have you really talked to DT and Cook and Thompson as far as motivation, knowing Sunday didn't go the way they wanted it to in terms of how they contribute, how they perform as a complement to Moses' inside? Well, I, you know, in terms of they know how they play. I mean, they, they know when, when they play well, our team really – plays well. And they had some moments in that SEC tournament, not necessarily in the, the championship game. Uh, but they just got to come out and do what they do. And, and what, what do they do? They do some of the blue collar things for our basketball team. Uh, and when teams are packing in on them, then they got to step out and knock down that 15, 16 foot shot. Uh, but more importantly, they got to bring the energy, 
Uh, they got to be screeners. Uh, they got to do their roles. And, and I think if you combine Dustin Thomas, who starts it all, Orlando Cook, uh, as he comes in and give us quality minutes, and then of course Trey Thompson is, I think he's playing outstanding basketball for us. And, uh, and we're going to need those guys to, to match you know, the Seton Hall forwards. Uh, I think that's going to be key in this. And uh, as we move forward, you know, our forwards is going to be key. I think our guards are playing at, at a pretty good level. You know, there are nights when, you know, let's say Daryl may have it going on, uh, uh, Barford may have it going on, and, and, you know, and teams are targeting in on, on Dusty Hannes. But we got to have somebody to step up. And then there come Anton Beard. And, and we see what Manuel brings to the table. He just added another dimension to his game and, and shooting the basketball and playing with a lot of confidence. Still doing all the dirty work. So, again, it's, to me it's about a team of balance and having more options now. So who are you going to key in on uh, is the key with this basketball team. But we've got to have somebody step up. Yeah, Mike, um, you know, Dusty, you know, he waited five years to get here. What sense do you get from him about how glad he is to cap off his career when he's waited so long? And just what have you thought about his season overall? I, I tell you what, I, I think so much of Dusty because, you know, coming in, obviously he was a guy that, that shot the ball, he was scoring, and, and we've seen his, his evolution as of a player. I and mean, he's developed going off the dribble, getting to the free throw line, and, uh, and even uh, playing a lot better defense than he had in the previous years. Uh, but I think he cares more about winning now. You know, sometimes you're, you're around guys who uh, embody winning. Uh, it makes a big difference. So now you start doing those little things, and, and we're seeing that. And Dusty's playing with an edge, too. Uh, uh, I think he's turned into a leader with this basketball team. Uh, I was, when I was walking up here and I heard somebody mention him about what did he do, you know, the last time we went to the NCAA tournament. Hell, he was out for in the beach somewhere, man. We out there trying to play, win a game in Jacksonville. He at the beach, uh, and he should have been there. But, 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 uh, but, but in essence, Dusty to me, I think he's had a very, very good year, outstanding year. He's been a target, uh, but I think he's done it the right way. There are sometimes when you know guys are in that position, they try to go get the game. I don't think he's done it. Every now and then, he's gonna shoot some bad shots. That's what uh, shooters and good players do. Uh, you know, as a coach, sometimes you gotta uh, you got you gotta live with it, and I've, I've lived with it this year, and, uh, and I think it has it has freed him to go ahead and play and and become you know the best player he can be. Coach Mitch Roberts here with ABC in Fayetteville. Uh, for a team that scores as well as you guys do, and and usually in the 80s, there's been some stretches, long stretches with no points at all, like in that Kentucky game. When you see those kind of things happening or going into the game. What do you tell the guys if they're going through a little bit of fu a funk like that, like maybe drive and try and get foul, get to the line so you don't have such long stretches with no points? You just you answered the question right then, didn't you? You said you said drive or get it inside. Let's let's go inside. Let's go into the beach. Let's let's get to the free throw line. Let's stop. It's kind of like you're bleeding. Let's stop the bleeding. And so we we got to figure out. You know we do have those droughts. We got to come down and really got to execute and get in what we need to get in. Uh, you know, in, in the Kentucky game, we did have some big droughts, and that's, that's a concern, and especially even when we get to this stage here, because you're playing against a team in Seton Hall, an uh, outstanding defensive team as well. Uh, so, but we've got to be able to, uh, whether we get uh, guys attacking the basket, or we're getting guys spot up, but we got to start, I think it's start inside, maybe getting more a nice touch. So, because sometimes it's not him, the key him just touching it, it may open up somebody else. Hey, Mike, uh, you went through a little stretch this season where you guys weren't playing particularly well. Missouri, Vanderbilt, you lose at home. People are down on the team. What, what were you guys going through right there? And was there a turning point coming out of that that you look back at now and say that's kind of thing started to click for you? You know, Bo, and we talked about this the other day. I, I just think that, you know, with this team here with so many new pieces, uh, you, you got to grow as a team. And we started this process in, in the summer months, uh, going to Spain and getting into the off season. Uh, and then, of course, practice. Uh, and even as you get into the, the regular season, it takes time. And with this team here, we have a pretty uh, good non-conference schedule. We did pretty good in it. And all of a sudden, you jump into conference play. And no sooner we jumped in conference play, the sense of urgency goes up 10, 20 notches. And, and I don't know if our guys understood that as a whole. 
I know the guys coming back understood, but that's the process we're talking about of building and creating that, uh, that chemistry with your team. And even as we got back on a winning track, uh, a winning streak, then of course, and we bump our heads again. We, we go to Missouri, play a team we played early in the year. You got to understand, they're better. Their sense of urgency uh, w was way off the roof, and I thought our guys kind of went in there just thinking we we're going to show up to win. So I think it's more mental than anything else. We start growing up mentally, and then Vanderbilt comes in and just, just whacks us at home. But I think we learn. So any time we have some adversity, we learn from it. And I think that's why you're seeing our team is starting to surge and, and put those experiences uh, into use. And so um, I'm anxious to see how we come out. You're coming from the Kentucky game where I thought we were just, uh, I thought we wanted it so bad that we were too amped up. And now you come to the, uh, to the NCAA tournament, the last, the D tournament, and uh, trying to win a national championship. I'm anxious to see how we come out and uh, did we learn from anything from that, knowing that now it's one game and you got to leave it all on the floor. With just three guys who have experience in the tournaments at that, at the, going into tomorrow, 24 hours from tip-off, do you talk about more about your previous experiences or do you re re rely on those three guys to tell the other guys what to expect? I, I think it's got to be a combination. they got to see it through my eyes. They've been seeing it through my eyes. That's why when you hear them talking, they're talking, hey, one game at a time. That's all we preach, one game at a time. And throughout this course of the year, uh, I've kept things simple. You know, obviously we added on some things, but we don't change. As a matter of fact, when we get to this time of the year, we really want to uh, turn up the intensity uh, in terms of how, how we play. Uh, and, but at the same time, we got to lean on those guys that have been through it. You know, Anton, Manuel, Moses, uh, even Trey. I mean, those guys were, were here. And, and so they've got to be the guys, hey, guys, this is how we do it. And, and I think these guys have got enough experience now to understand the sense of urgency uh, in terms of how we want to play and what do we want to do in, in terms of carrying out a game plan. Uh, J.P. Pelt, I'm sorry. Where you at, J.P.? Yeah, your friend is over here. Uh, J.P. Pelton, Gannett, New Jersey. Mike, I apologize if this is, might be a bit of a repeat, but besides Delgado, who was obviously a great offensive rebounder, it seems like with Seton Hall, a lot of them crashed the offensive boards. Even the guards like Carrington, he'll slip in there for an offensive board. How much does that concern you? And how much, though, if you get the defensive boards, can it obviously kickstart your transition game? Well, uh, you know, that's going to be the ending part of defense is rebounding the basketball. And you're absolutely right. I've, uh, Rodriguez, I mean, he's a tremendous rebounder. I mean, all those guys rebound. Carrington, the guards, I mean, they, uh, they're one of those teams, they shoot it and go get it. And because they shoot it and they know where it's going. And that means we've got to do a, uh, an outstanding job of keeping them off the boards. Uh, and they play quite a few teams, and you can see there the difference in rebound is, is offensive rebound is unbelievable. So that tells you they've got a knack for that, and we've got to, we got to limit them to getting that. Because what not only does getting offensive rebound, you're talking about scoring, but it puts your guys in foul trouble as well. Because that's when those fouls come. And so, so for all of us to, to keep guys out of foul trouble, we got to do a good job on the glass. And, and, and once we do that, our guards have got to rebound the basketball. And I think that really gets us into transition. And we got some forwards, we feel, that, that are versatile enough that can get up and down the floor. But uh, I think the key is uh, Delgado's got to be one we got to keep off. Uh, I think the other guys, we got to do a good job of putting body on body. Um, Mike, um, and for Dusty, the, the other part of that question a minute ago, you know, how happy are you that he's finally getting to experience the NCAA tournament? What, what do you think it means to him? He wants to win. I think that's it. He don't just want to experience. He wants to win. And, uh, and I think it's, it's kind of fitting for he and, and the seniors. Uh, we talked about the beginning of the year, you know, as we brought in uh, this group of guys to go along with them, you know, making a special year. And when you got some uh, – the seniors that we have that are invested in our program uh, and doing the things the right way, the graduate, getting ready to graduate. We got you know Moses who's on our, uh, the SEC leadership uh, 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 SAC program. I mean, uh, we got some guys that are doing some outstanding things in our community. And uh, so to me, it's fitting that they go out and, and, uh, in, in, a, in a great way. And what great, what better way to go out than, than have an opportunity to participate and uh, expand and dance in an NCAA tournament. So uh, he's happy. Do we have any additional questions?